What's good? I'm back with another video, and today I'm going to be going over my editing workflow when it comes to editing music videos. This is going to be an overview, so I'm not going to go through like every little nitpicky detail, like what effects I want to use and things like that. I'm just going to give you my overall workflows for cranking out projects in a, what I consider to be a more efficient time. Now, with this workflow, I pretty much can crank out a video within like four maybe five hours, just depending on how long the song is and how many effects I want to use. Shout out to the community tab. I appreciate y'all uh, feedback, your, your comments, your likes and everything. Truly appreciate it. Let's get into the video. Before I actually get into DaVinci, the videos I've edited so far were not shot by me. They were actually shot by some of my subscribers. So I'm gonna link them in the description down below. Before the footage is uploaded to Google Drive, not just downloaded, then I import into DaVinci and then I get cracking. Now I'm in DaVinci Resolve. I'm actually go through and synchronize the song itself with all the clips. You see all the clips here, I'm gonna hit Control A. Then I'm gonna right click, go down to auto sync audio, I'm gonna do a bass off waveform. So what that's gonna do is synchronize the audio from the video clips to the actual song itself. You can actually see here it has quite a few failures that it didn't sync. That's because actually not all these clips actually have the song on there. So those are the clips I'm more or less gonna use for like B-roll. And speaking of B-roll, I'm basically gonna go through the clips and play them and see which ones do and don't have audio, or don't have the actual song sync to it, and I'm actually marked over the flag. Now, I found me a clip. This is actually more or less a kind of like a special case because the song does come in towards the end of the clip, but the beginning of it does not have the uh, song on there. And it's actually like recorded twice. So I'm gonna still gonna mark it with a red flag. Now, to mark it with a flag, gonna right click and then just go down to flags. Oh, right click, go down to flags, and I just choose red. Now, the color doesn't matter, it's just my own little personal system. I just use a red flag. You can mark it with any color. <laughs> Now that I got the clips without the song synced to it, marked with a flag, I'm gonna go through now and change the clip color of all the clips that do have the song on it. So I'm gonna go here, right click, and go to clip color, and change it to orange. The reason I'm actually changing the clip color, like for instance, for this video, is basically three main scenes that were shot in. Each scene has different lighting, different scenarios that you have to accommodate for when you go into the color grade. Of course, in the edit, the clip is gonna end up getting chopped up to different times. So instead of me editing one clip on the color grade and then trying to visually sync them up, if I change the clip color, I can change one that's orange and then I can just select all the orange clips within the timeline on my color grade and then just remote grade it. I got quite a few clips here, so I'm not gonna go through the whole thing. I'm not trying to actually edit out the full video, but you get the idea. All of them are actually color graded, well not color graded, but color coded now. And for my next step, I'm actually gonna take all those clips and put them on a the timeline, one on top of another. Now I got all the clips on the timeline, I'm actually gonna bring in the song now at the bottom. So I'm gonna bring this down here. Actually, I'm gonna move the timeline around. Bring this down here. I'm actually gonna go in here now and actually lock this track. Now I lock the track because sometimes in the selection process of me cutting up the clips, it will cut through the audio. So I don't want the song to get disturbed at all. So it's actually locked in place because I have no need to edit it or anything like that. It's already been edited on the, on the back end or the front end, back, front, front, front end. Now with everything, now with everything on the timeline, I'm gonna select all and rearrange them. So I'm gonna hit Control A to select all, right click, and then go over here into auto align clips based off waveform. And you notice they actually went through and synchronized the clips based off the audio. You'll notice some clips are shorter than the others. They're just like maybe like a, a maybe a verse or a couple of bars within the video. So it's not the entire length of the, it's not an entire scene or anything like that. So they, using the auto align clip by, based off waveform, it will move them to where they need to be in the song for the video. Now down on audio, I'm gonna select it all and delete it. So I'm gonna hold alt on the keyboard so it will only select the audio. Go through here and select everything, then hit backspace, delete it. That's leaving me just the master track. If you want to get rid of the space here, you can actually put the master track on the top, then you delete all the audio underneath it. But right now it's at the bottom. Actually, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit unlock and I'm gonna hold shift. Now, if you hold shift and move anything on the timeline, it locks it in that that, that space. So you can only move it up and down. Therefore, you don't have to worry about it getting thrown off uh, from side to side. So holding shift and move it straight up. Keep it in this place, and then I'm gonna right click down here, delete empty tracks, and get rid of that space here. I'm gonna lock this back in. Then I move this back down, and now I have all this space here I can play with as far as my editing. Now this next part is the most time consuming. I'm basically gonna go through and chop up the clips and basically lay out the entire video. When it comes to choosing what clips I wanna use, I'm more or less just kinda 
go with the flow of the song really i'm more or less kind of fill out the song i might actually go through and like scroll up through the footage especially like the the ones that's like a full scene if you use the keyboard shortcuts jk and l it allow you to scroll up through the footage real quick so i kind of like get a visual of it see what parts i do and don't want to use from there i more or less chop up the clip based off like the song like maybe the beat or the the lyrics and in particular with a hip-hop video if he finish a bar I want the next scene to be the, the, I want the next bar to be in the next scene. Or if it's some high energy, you probably have the clips kind of jump around a lot. If it's some more, more, more mellow, you might want to stick to a scene for a little bit longer than another scene. Just kind of depend on what story you're trying to tell. And doing this process, I have all the clips on my timeline. And I basically will use the shortcut key H and D to kind of basically cut and disable. By default, H is actually not a key. There's actually a shortcut for anything. This is one I set up myself. Of course, you can go up here to DaVinci Resolve keyboard customizations go over to the search bar and hit type in split and right here where it says timeline got split clip by default that's actually empty i put in h of course again you can use any key you want so basically going through the footage if i say actually i'm gonna mute the song if i'm going through the footage and i say oh i want to use that particular scene i just hit h on the keyboard to split it and then the part after it, I will hit D on the keyboard to disable. And that will actually allow my next clip under it to be visible. If I want to use that, I'll go with that. Hit split. Yeah, hit the split. Make sure it's selected. Hit split. And then click on this. Make sure it's highlighted. Then disable. And then I, that will actually give me leeway to use the bottom clip down here. But say for instance, I want this clip. I'll just leave it visible. Get to the next part. If I want to use that, I'll use it. If not, I can hit D, disable. Then I can hit split here to re-enable and just kind of, I mean, let's just kind of continue doing this throughout the entire video. And the actual reason why I don't just, the part that they say, I don't just delete it, whatever, because I'm kind of rushing, more or less rushing through it to kind of get the visual. I will play it back several times and kind of look at the clips to see if I actually want to keep them or not. If not, I can just simply do this. So say for instance, this little green part here, I look at it and see it's actually kind of out of focus there. They were right about right there is where the focus really comes in and make kind of lose a little focus there. So I can hit split there, disable, and then I can split here, re-enable. And if I want to stretch it out or reduce or anything like that, the, the footage is there. It's on the timeline. I don't have to worry about going back into the media pool, try to pull it back out. And also it maintains the synchronization because I synced it in the beginning. Far using JK and L, basically the L will play it normal speed and the more you hit it you get the little indicator here to speed up the playback and if you hit K it will actually stop it and if you hit J it reverse it and you can continuously hit that key to speed up the playback and, well the reverse playback once again that allow you to scrub through the footage real quick without having to sit there and just kind of look at every little beat you just kind of get an overall view of it so I will continue to actually hit H and D and basically split and disable clips throughout the entire song I'll play it back a couple of times see what clips I want to change, if, if there are any clips I want to change. And also I'll go back in the media pool, pull my uh, my red flag clips. If I want to get like a little B-roll in between like a scene or maybe use it for like some special effects or footage or something like that, I have those clips in the media pool. And once I got the whole video laid out as far as with the story I'm trying to tell visually in a way, I'll then go back and add effects. As far as effects I use, I more or less kind of tailored it to the, the song itself. If it's some kind of lyric like dealing with money, I might try to throw like a money effect in, just kind of fill out the song. Other than that, more or less like throw in some transitions, especially if it's one, like one scene or a couple of scenes I've been using for like the first part of the footage. Then you get towards the end, I might use some footage that was not seen yet. And I'll do like a transition for that. And also kind of do a transition based off more or less like a tempo of the song. Cause sometimes you might have, the song might have one flow and the song's about to change to a different flow style or flow pattern or different cadence then I'll change it based off that. Now, of course, if you need any ideas for effects, feel free to check out the rest of my channel. If you see any effects, it's like a Premiere Pro or a Final Cut video, feel free to send them my way, link them in the description or hit me up on Instagram. I'd be more than happy to take a look at it. If I can translate to DaVinci Resolve, I will. Once I've done my effects and everything, I then go into the color grade and I'm gonna show you why I changed the clip colors. I'm not gonna go into the whole color grading process. I'm not a colorist. I'm more or less just kind of play it by eye. Now, this footage here is actually shot on Blackmagic uh, cameras. So this here, I'm more or less add a look to it and kind of just tweak kind of like the, the settings as far as like the saturation and stuff. Now, when it comes to the color grading, because of the way I have the clips set on or stacked on top of one another, it can make it a little tricky, but I've gotten used to it. So I kind of understand what's going on.
But more or less, I go up here and cut on timeline, and I can see the color of the timeline or of the clips here in the, the time in the display. <laughs> you also can cut on clips, and then you got the little marker here to indicate the color. So I know which one that I'm actually color grading or what or what have you. Now this here is more like a toss up. It's a mixture. Some of these clips are actually color graded in camera. I can still tweak those a little bit, and the rest of them are shot raw. And uh, those are the main ones I'm going to focus on. Now once I'm done color grading a particular scene, I can go through and match that color throughout the timeline. So looking at the clips here, and just go up here and hold Control on the keyboard and select the other clips that have the same color, indicated by this little marker here or this little dot here. Then I go back to my original clip that I color graded, which you can tell which one is color graded by looking at this little uh, box here, the number. When it has a little rainbow effect around it, that means the clip has been color graded. Now that I'll select it, I'll go back to the original clip and hover over it with my mouse, and then I'll click in the mouse at will. Now, if you edit on a laptop and you don't have a mouse, I, I think there's a way to do that without having a mouse, but I'm not sure how, but you probably can Google it or something like that. But if you don't have a mouse, first of all, get one. And it makes it a lot easier as far as color grading and editing in the color page. Now all the footage on my timeline is from that one particular scene. It's color graded. Then I can move on to the next color. <laughs> now we're about to get into the delivery tab. Before I do it on my delivery, I actually had to change my timeline. So go in here and right click, timeline settings, and timeline settings. And I edit everything in 1080p. This footage here is actually 6K. Like I said, it's coming from a Blackmagic Raw 6K, but I'm a, I actually edit it in 1080p. I go over here, uncheck project settings. I'm gonna deliver it in 4K though. So I'm gonna drop it down here to 4K and click OK. Now we're in delivery tab. These are the settings I use for uploading to YouTube. So I'm gonna use QuickTime, H.265. Now 265, I think you can only use if you're using the studio version. So far, everything I've gone over so far can be using the free version, but I think dot two six five can only be used in studio, so you can use dot two six four. I have a NVIDIA uh, graphics card, so I'm gonna use that far as the rendering, and I'm gonna uh, I'm also check network optimization. Of course, it's in four K, twenty four frames a second, twenty four FPS is of course is the standard Hollywood cinema footage. I think uh, across the, in the UK across the the pond as they call it is twenty five, so you can change the frame rate whatever you want, but the standard is pretty much twenty four. Let's be it. 24 SPS is of course, alternatively 23.976. As far as quality, user automatically is checked by default. I usually change it to restricted and I type in 80,000, actually a little bit overkill. I just leave it at that for pretty much all my projects. It makes your folder a little bit bigger, but also helps uh, when you upload to YouTube, it counterbalances the compression. Encoding profile, change it from main to main 10. That basically gonna give you a 10 bit render. Again, help them maintain the color and uh, fight back against the compression of YouTube. I'm gonna go down here to advanced settings and I'm gonna drop down to gamma tag, change from same as project to Rex 709A. And the reason for that, from what I was told that doing so will actually help with playback on Apple devices because they, the display they use is different from you know standard windows and other displays. And so sometimes the color will get like messed up and drowned out and stuff like that. For my YouTube projects, I used to use up the YouTube settings upload directly to YouTube, but ever since DaVinci Resolve 18, it's been completely broken. It always fails. Is anyone else having that problem? Let me know in the comments. Add the render queue, render it out, and you're done. That's more or less my entire editing process. What did you think? Did you think it's efficient enough, or maybe I can? Maybe I'm still doing too much. Maybe some steps I can cut out. Let me know if you got a better workflow. Make sure you drop them down in the comment section below, and I'll see you in the next video. That was a lot of rhyming. Yeah, that was, that was workflow, video. See y'all next time. <laughs>